But when you do have clients who are engaged, they will refer you five times more than someone who's just not wow. engaged. So it's not just retention, it's growth. Right. Really, communication is central to both of those things. Hi, I'm Chris Reynolds, and I'm on a mission to help independent financial advisors build a better business through a remarkable client experience. In this podcast, you're going to learn how to do that from my conversations with the visionaries, the leaders, the independent advisors who are reshaping the future of the financial advice industry. At the end of each episode, you're going to walk away with an actionable idea that you can take and use right now, and it will help you to build a better business today. This is Turning the Page. They say that the uh, fundamental foundation of any good relationship is communication. And we're going to explore all about communication because I think one of the cornerstones of every successful advisor that I've ever met has been around the, the art of communication and really keeping those clients informed, understanding what they want to hear. And, and really continuing to develop that relationship. So I'm very excited. I got Kevin Mulhern, who's the CEO and co-founder, so we're going to talk about business as well, of Advisor Stream, which I know, you know most of the top advisors in Canada certainly use this service and probably more. And I'm let, I'll let Kevin tell a story and uh, certainly expand upon it. But Kevin, thank you so much for being part of our podcast today. Thrilled to be here. Uh, absolutely thrilled to be here, Chris. Now you were mentioning uh, before we started that we had we had met way back when uh, when you were developing this concept. So maybe for the whole audience, yeah. maybe talk about your journey. Like, how did you get here? What's sure. your story? Sure. Um, many years ago, and I was trying to find out. I think it was uh, January or February, 2012 or 13. Wow. You and I, uh, and and another person I had worked with in in my past history, Dan Richards, met for uh, a breakfast. Um, and at, at that breakfast, we were actually pitching uh, the, uh, the concept. It hadn't been built yet, but we, I was thinking about building a uh, communication system, web-based communication system for advisors. We actually got your feedback, which was great feedback, which we used. Um, so yeah, that, it goes back a long ways. Um, back then, what I had done is assemble an advisory board of different uh, advisors, marketing executives, and even compliance officers, and try to figure out what would be the ultimate automated marketing platform for financial advisors. So that was way back when, about 10 years ago, in fact. Wow. And you've come a long way. Like, look at what you've built in that 10 years. You went from a concept that we had, uh, you know, had some talks about to, as I said, I know, I know, as I said, almost every successful advisor that I know of uses your service to some extent. So maybe, maybe talk a little bit. I'm not sure everybody's familiar with what is advisor sure. stream and, and how do advisors sure. actually use it and why do they use it? In way of my background, I've been working, building web-based technologies, um, for basically my whole career. Um, and right before I had met you, um, before that I had built a system called EMS, email marketing system, kind of a boring right. name that way back then. Uh, but it did become the largest email marketing system in Canada used by all kinds of industries uh, from Shoppers Drug Mart to the Canadian Mint, uh, as well as financial firms started using it. And that's really when things started to, to brew in my head. Um, and I started to gather the right people to discuss what, what a perfect communication system would look like for financial advisors. Um, I, I had gone and worked and helped grow as a, a founding partner at Richardson Wealth, and then had built um, some, some web-based systems for TD Waterhouse in five different countries, and then Morgan Stanley. Um, but it was really while I was at Richardson when I realized that advisors truly didn't know how to use all these newly emerging, use all these newly emerging uh, technologies, um, particularly um, social media, and effectively using email for communications uh, and even websites. So, so um, at that time, at the same time as a lack of really understanding of how to leverage digital communications, there was also a change going on in the content environment. All the newspapers were under great pressure from, from large tech platforms like Facebook and Google. And so we're putting up paywalls. So we were in a situation where all these new communications channels, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, right. to you know, ahead of email, were coming up. 
they weren't approved that many broker dealers or, or firms yet. <laughs> right, right. But we, we said, wait a minute, that is going to become part of the mix. But at the same time, what content are you going to use? Um, you can create your own, but advisors should really be spending their time strengthening and building and finding new relationships, not becoming a professional marketer. So it was really at that time we said, wait a minute, there's a big opportunity here to get communications technology in the hands of individual advisors. And kind of at that time, really, it was quite expensive to be that accessible for advisors. So, but the costs were coming down very, very quickly. So we thought, let's get ahead of it. Let's get, uh, build a platform uh, for individual advisors, not just big firms. Um, so beyond, you know, the, the big six here and, and the big broker dealers that can afford these really expensive systems, how do we bring this technology down to the individual advisor level? That's really how it got going. Yeah, and, and it's been great. And one of the things, and you, 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 you said it, but I think it needs emphasis, is content is king. As they say, in any communication, yeah. you want the right content, you want access to content. But as somebody who actually writes that content, it's yeah. hard. Like every yeah. week, if you want a weekly communication, uh, and I don't think people actually realize how daunting a task it is to come up with good contact. And maybe you could touch on a little bit on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we do see some advisors. We service thousands and thousands of advisors um, with the platform. Um, it, we're a Canadian company at heart. We are, you know, we're, we're big in the U.S. and we were acquired by Broadridge, a U.S. company, uh, about uh, 15 months ago. But um, we're still the exact same group of people, same technology, same company, just under their ownership now. But so we, we do service uh, about 70 percent of our, our advisors are in the U.S., um, Canada and the UK. But Canada is really where we're all from and where we started it. But you're right. Content is king. Content's at the center of it. And one thing became very obvious is that while some advisors write content, that's good. Um, many, most don't have the time to do that. Right. And I would argue that advisors shouldn't even try to make the time to become like a, a great writer. Um, what we believe and what we've seen really deliver ROI in terms of high retention rates because of communications and, and high lead generation rates because of the sharing of those communications is you really need to lean on the world's best content creator. So, you know, right. we went out and sat down, we literally sat down with, you know, uh, the Bloomberg's the, up here in Canada, Globe and Mail, National Post, Toronto Star, right. uh, Canadian Press. And in the States, you know, Wall Street Journal, Barron's, Bloomberg, Forbes, Reuters, New York Times, and on and on, sat down with them and explained how we wanted to work with content, because content is at the center of all marketing activities, really, regardless right. if you're delivering that content via social media, email, or on a website or blog, or drip campaign, at the, at the heart of that marketing initiative is content, as you're saying. So we went out and partnered with all of those uh, publishers to strengthen content coming out of the head offices and also the content coming from advisors. So there was enough content to really be effective on all digital channels. Yeah, no, no. And I see that all the time. Um, and, and I've said, you know, from the beginning of my career and, and studying, you know, what makes not only great advisors, great businesses is their yes. ability to communicate effectively and on a regular yeah. basis with their client base. And, and you, you've had some studies on this. Maybe you could share some of the stats on, how much communication means to consumers and their loyalty to particular businesses. Absolutely. Um, in fact, yeah, I'll mention a couple studies I think that are super relevant and we can make this stuff available uh, to, to any of the folks listening here if they'd like to actually see some of this stuff. We did a really big study with Dow Jones last year, the state of advisors, uh, sorry, the state of advice. And, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but there's some other part studies that we've been, we track a lot of different studies that we thought were really interesting. Uh, for example, um, Salesforce did a great study saying, why do investors leave? Why do investors mm -hmm. go and find another advisor? Right. And it showed that communication was the second most cited reason that an investor will leave their advisor, mm -hmm. lack of communication or lack of consistent communication. And it was interesting because it was actually ranked higher than perceived bad advice. Number one was wow. ease. Investors will leave because of fees. That's, that's, right. that's a very hard thing to mitigate with a technology solution. Perceived bad advice, also hard to mitigate someone's opinions with technology, but communication, the second most cited reason for people to leave. And um, 
And, and that's something that is easily taken care of through a platform like Advisor Stream or, or other platforms. So that, that's something I think advisors should be aware of. Communication is that central and that critical. It's really a cornerstone of retention um, and a, really a cornerstone of building a business for an advisor. So that's, that's uh, an interesting one. And we've, we've seen other studies like a great Vanguard study um, okay. which showed that when, when your clients feel engaged, you're communicating consistently you're communicating valued information. We can talk about that in a little minute. What, what content should you be communicating with? And that gets really interesting. But when you do have clients who are engaged, they will refer you five times more than someone who's just not wow. engaged. So it's not just retention, it's growth. Right. Really, communication is central to both of those things. Well, I think if you really think about it, like common sense will tell you what breaks up most relationships. Just yeah, in general, let, ne, never mind the, the client uh, advisor relationship, any relationship is usually lack of perceived communication or a misunderstanding or not regular uh, communication. Uh, so it, it just makes sense that if you can have an automated way to continue to drip on your clients, to show them that you're on top of things, that um, you're keeping up on local um, events, things that might affect their finances. I think it just makes sense. Um, Absolutely. Like we see that. So the average investor today gets 26 touch points a year. Okay. This is a Cerulli study. And um, every single group of investors, regardless of age or gender or even wealth level, all of them want more communications. And then we did a study with hmm. Dow Jones this year, and it showed that a vast, vast majority, I think it was 86% of, and regardless of country, um, so in the UK, Canada, and the United States, um, about 86% want weekly communications. And, and often wow. advisors say, that's too much, but it's not. Um, as you just pointed out, people don't leave relationships because you've over-communicated. It has to right. be valuable information. But um, it's communicate, communicate, communicate. Just like in real estate, it's uh, location, location, location. I think in, in any strong business relationship, it's, you have to be communicating regularly, consistently, and you have to be delivering credible, current, relevant content to each individual you're communicating with. Yeah, no, could not agree more. Now, Kevin, I also had you on the show, not just because of communication and content, it's because you're an entrepreneur and all, all our listeners are entrepreneurs as, as well. And so, you know, you've built this company, came from a concept, uh, you know, you yeah. took a, 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 looked at a problem within an industry, you fulfilled that problem. Tell us, you know, from an entrepreneurial point of view, what were your mm -hmm. challenges? Why did you build it? And what advice would you give other entrepreneurs? That's a great question. Um, well, the, the reason I built it was because I saw a real opportunity to make the lives of advisors better. And I had been working with advisors for years already. And it was just kind of painful to see all of these capabilities that used to be only accessible by large companies available now at a price point had come down by a factor of 10, you know, instead of oh, wow. spending $2 million on, on implementing a digital communication system, you could do it for, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month. Uh, right. So the first thing I saw was opportunity to kind of change the lives of advisors um, and specifically to automate some of the things that weren't automated in the past, free, freeing up advisors time. So that's, right. that's why advisor stream was chosen as an entrepreneur. Um, you know, I, I was excited to have the, the ability to shape something um, with the advice of people like yourself, obviously industry leaders um, of, from advisors and, and from uh, head office people who who don't often get included in in the the innovation stage of a, right. of a technology, so that was really really cool. Um, personally, I've been a serial entrepreneur for a while. Um, this has by far been my most um, um, enjoyable um, you know you know business that I've built. Um, but certainly, what I've learned is the same thing Advisor Stream is trying to do for advisors, which are also business owners is really to automate the things that can be automated as long as they can be done properly, reduce right. overhead, reduce the number of people you need in the early days through systems. That way you have a much better chance of trying to survive. Like every new business has a runway of time, of money that will right. run out sooner or later. So you really want to find um, tools that can help you make that runway longer to get your business off the ground and get it healthy. Um, so I, you know, a lot of that was done through 
um, exactly what we preach. And that was finding really, really good tools to automate um, things. Like it, today, advisors spend on average 54 hours a week working. And right. about 16 hours of that, and I wrote an article in the Globe about a year ago on this, but about 16 hours of that could be automated. And that, right. that's literally what advisor stream does and advisor stream we don't want anyone spending more than 15 minutes a week in their advisor stream account that's our goal um right. some people spend less they're fully automated some other people want a little bit a little bit more hands-on but um you know this business i started to make lives better for advisors and also to see if this could be built coming out of canada and spread to other countries um that's always that's always tough for Canadian entrepreneurs is that jump um, across borders sometimes. Right. To go to that other the big market we call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, on the on the United States, this is one piece. If I could give one piece of advice, this isn't only specific to advisors, but you know, I do know a lot of advisor entrepreneurs in this country, and you've been, you've interviewed a lot of them actually. Um, and so so for for entrepreneurs generally, Canadian entrepreneurs generally. And for advisors, um, you know, I now know a lot of advisors are actually starting to do business in the States as well. But right. for, for, for a smaller company, you got to remember that, as you just said, there's the huge market. It's 10 times bigger. In my view, you're giving yourself 10, 10 times a better chance of, 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 of really growing to a size that you, you couldn't do just in Canada. There is always that risk. You don't want to go too soon. Your product has to be ready or your service right, has to right. be refined and ready. You can't go early. I think there's a whole litany of Canadian companies that have said, we're going to the US and then they blow a bunch of cash and come back with their tails between their legs. So you, you do want to be ready. <laughs> yeah, no, no. And it makes perfect sense. And again, look at the success that you've had. So I don't know, you've listened to the show. There's also a segment I call my rapid fire. I never send those questions in advance. Uh, okay. So I'm going to ask you three questions and I want you to sure. just to tell me it's the first thing that pops into your mind. And the first question sure. I always says, what do you love doing? What do you love the most? I love working with people, uh, directly with people and creating something. Uh, I don't like dictating a vision. I like coming into a room with, with an idea having smart people around. Uh, and then when you walk out of that room, you all have an idea and it's one mm. that can fly. I love it. Um, and the other one is name a meaningful interaction or a memorable interaction that you've had with a client. And maybe you can use it in a case of an example of somebody you were talking to that used what you have and it was sure. very meaningful. Sure. So I, I'll tell you a secret and, and I hope um, uh, my acquirers aren't listening to this because it might worry them, but I actually get all my support. I get all the support tickets uh, and I never, I never stop getting the support tickets. I mean, all of them. I mean, we work with hundreds of your advisors and uh, I see their support tickets. I see everyone else's support tickets. And the reason for that is I want to know how we're performing, how the product is performing. And you want to make sure that the number of support tickets isn't growing faster than your own right. number of clients. Um, and you really get a sense of things that you need to work on or change or adjust or add to the platform by listening to who the people who use this with their clients. So I've had a, a lot of meaningful interactions. Um, you know, um, I think of, of one interaction, one of, one of the, one of the first, and I've, I've had a few of these now, but there's a, there's a gentleman called Rob Ebby. He's one of our financial advisors that's been on the system for about six or seven years, I think. And, uh, he was an advisory board member as well. But I remember um, when this is back before the pandemic, right before there was a dip in the markets late 2019. And so I thought I would call around to some of the people that I have access to and say, you know, what are your clients saying? Um, are they are they worried, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, and Rob said, it's funny. I had nobody call me. I was going to get my top 10 clients out and call them. So I started and I got down to the three or four down in my clients. And they said, no, 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 you've been and communicating the content I need to know to be comfortable with what you don't need to mansplain it to me. I got it. That was from communication. So that's, right, that's right. the kind of thing, you know, that, that we really love to hear. Uh, we also get a lot of product ideas from clients, like new feature ideas. But um, I was recently also on a panel out in, uh, in, in uh, BC earlier in Vancouver earlier in the year. And one of my clients happened to be on the panel. I didn't know he was oh, wow. a client. And uh, we were talking about things. And he was talking about growth and how critical it is that client referrals are simply the way he grows his business. And 
uh, over 90% of his leads came from us that year. And they, they were all driven by either social media, about half of them, and half of them were clients, so just sharing content. Not saying wow. you should talk to this advisor, just, hey, check out this article. Right. And, and that ended up driving new business. So I love hearing those kind of things. They're that great. And, and that, that's what warms all entrepreneurs' hearts is when you hear the success yeah. stories that someone has had Absolutely. using your service, platform, you know, whatever. My last question to you is, how do you want to be remembered? Gee, that's a hard one. I'd like to be remembered for someone who contributed, a Canadian who contributed to wealth, the wealth management industry. Um, you know, we do have a lot of people. We have 1,200 real estate. I just found this out. We have 1,200 real estate advisors using our platforms, not originally wow. built for them um, and with a lot of insurance agents. But where my heart kind of has been has been in the wealth management space, particularly in Canada. Um, I'm a huge fan of the country, even though, you know, I spent a lot of my time south of the border. Um, so I'd like to be known as someone who made adv Canadian advisors' lives easier. Um, and that, that in, it, in itself would be wonderful. That's a great way to be remembered. So in my final sort of conclusion, my rant, I call it, um, I think what we've learned today is communication is king. Communication is, is key to re re retention. It's a key to growth. It's a key to get uh, referrals. Uh, and especially today, you know, I'm going to say post pandemic, people yeah. are used to getting information via, um, you know, digital mediums. And a lot of advisors have not yet caught up. And I think, you know, yeah. a service like yours helps them catch up, yeah. helps them with content, which as I said, content is king. It's very hard to come up with your own. And if you can automate it even better. So Kevin, thank you so much for being with us. I don't know if there's any final words or if somebody hasn't um, used your service, how would they actually go find you? Yeah. Come to www.advisorstream.com. Come and try it for free. Um, you know, we'd love to, we'd love you to try it. Once people try it, they stay with us. Our churn rate or our retention rates are very high and our churn rates are low for a reason. Come and try it. Uh, we want to make your life easier. And um, I would just last statement I would say is it really is the golden age of automation and AI for advisors. It's finally here in a way that can make your life better, not more complicated, and it won't take you weeks to set it up. It'll take you an hour. So it's, 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 it's in your grasp to compete against firms much bigger than you. An individual advisor today can have the presence and, and effectiveness digitally that only large companies could have a few years ago. So get out there and, and, and leverage digital technologies. I love it. Thank you, Kevin Mulhern, CEO, co-founder of Advisor Stream. Thank you very much for being uh, part of this week's uh, podcast. And if anyone has any questions or wants to have a virtual coffee to talk about communication, you can always call me directly. Thank you again, Kevin, and thanks for listening. Thank you, and thanks for your help in the early days. Thanks for joining me on Turning the Page. What did you learn from today's episode? If you follow me on LinkedIn, please drop me a comment there. I'd love to chat with you about it over a virtual coffee. Send me a message on LinkedIn, or you can do so at our website. The link's in the show notes. I'm Chris Reynolds, and until next time.